film the most thrilling 30 second sequence wearing the welly cam? Oh, is that a camera? You have 30 minutes. Your time starts now. <laughs> Don't worry, let's just get the boots on straight away, just in case anything thrilling happens while I'm looking for props. <laughs> I mean, if I go out the front door and fall over, that might be the best 30 seconds. <laughs> Lovely. It's an, it's an age thing that I can very much relate to, that Alan thinks that the most exciting part of his film is possibly him falling over. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't wait to see them. Can we just we get can stuck crack in? On. Yep, it's the most thrilling 30-second action sequence. And this one belongs to Alan Davies. <laughs> so nice of Alex to let us have a little boat trip, Victoria. Well, down there I can see, oh, giant lizards. Oh, that's amazing. Well, hang on a sec. Well, oh, how terrifying. Enormous ducks. Cheap, 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 <laughs> cheap. Oh, oh, my goodness. That's the biggest. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Victoria. Can you speak? No, I'm underwater. <laughs> oh. oh, what a terrifying creature. Oh, my goodness, what are you doing in my bath? Oh, you seem quite friendly. I, I am, actually. <laughs> I'll help you. I'll get your boat and I'll get rid of the horrible man-eating duck. Go away! <laughs> Victoria, you've come adrift. You're face down. You're... Oh, yeah, you look really dead. I guess this is... this is goodbye. We couldn't be rescued. <laughs> Great filmmaking. Very it, it, it is great filmmaking. You know, you could argue that film's quite profound in, in many ways, and then there was certainly a very involved narrative in which I think Victoria perished. It was Victoria. That was, was that meant to be me? No, that's just... Yeah, like... yeah, it's you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was a film about me drowning. Yeah, I think... You weren't meant to drown, but you came off the stick. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally involved until we saw that wide shot of a man <laughs> standing in a bank. <laughs> and for me, the magic was gone. That made it for me, because, like, I just saw a fully clothed man in a tub and I was like, this person's a great dad. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But cockles. he's not doing it for kids, he's doing it for his own self aggrandizement <laughs> I don't feel very well. Spread jam on a slice of toast in a really cool way. Cool as jam spreading wins. I have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. Oh, what did the... Oh, God. If I knew what cool was, I would not have arrived at this point in my life. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, toast. Hey, little toasty. Say, really. It's all in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? It's always cool to have one pair sort of in your... Isn't it? Yeah. It's quite cool to have one pair on top of your head. Wow. <laughs> oh, that felt really cool. Oh. It'd be hard. Press to think of a cooler way. Whole strawberry there. Is there? I just mentioned in that for health and safety reasons, because that the power of this thing. He's swaggering around the hotel gardens. Oh no, he's gonna blow leaves. He's gonna blow leaves. What's the point? But actually. <laughs> that that is a game changer. The coolest thing I saw was Alan ringing that little bell. <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment where I thought that Alan, <laughs> that Alan walking around the garden with three pairs of sunglasses on, with a leaf blower in his hand and some jam toast in one hand, I thought, well, there is something quite cool yeah. about that. <laughs> but it was when you started blowing jam from the blower onto the toast that you lost cool points. <laughs> one at a time. Make a noise without the taskmaster identifying you. The person who makes the most unidentified noises wins. What's going to happen is the taskmaster will not be looking at you. 
I will give you a type of noise you have to make. You have to make the noise for at least two seconds. Greg will guess who he thinks was making the noise. There are three rounds. The person who has identified the least wins. OK. Revolve me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bit too far, Greg. <laughs> again, too far oh, again. Imagine him parking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first noise you're gonna make is bird song. And the first person to the front is this person. So they're now gonna make their way to the front. We need two seconds of noise, and Greg will guess who made the noise. Here comes the noise. Greg, who was making that beautiful noise? Morgana. <laughs> the next person to come to the front is this person. They're making their way to the front now. Here comes the noise. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I think it was Alan. <laughs> They are now returning to their spot. <laughs> OK, the next person to make a noise is this person. <laughs> Here comes the noise. Mm. Well, I think it was Alan again. Oh, God, was it? No, I think I made a mistake first time. I'm going to say Alan for that second one. OK. Next person to the front is this person, please. Here comes the noise. Victoria. <laughs> and there is, of course, just one person left. Here comes the noise. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's in the round one, Greg. I can tell you that you got one Alan correct and one Desiree correct. It's time for round two, and round two is, of course, two seconds of beatboxing. <laughs> what, is what is beatboxing? You don't want to give away your hand too much. I think what you're probably hoping is that you don't go first. <laughs> what I'm hoping is that you do. <laughs> okay. The first person to beatbox is... They're making their way to the front. Here comes the noise! <laughs> it's either someone who doesn't know what beatboxing is, Victoria... Right. ..or it's someone pretending they don't know what it is. With that level of cunning, I'm going to attribute to Morgana. The next person to demonstrate their beatboxing skills... Yeah. Here comes the noise. <laughs> Desiree. <laughs> OK, there are three left to beatbox. The next person... It's this person. Here comes the noise. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> it's this person now. Guys. <laughs> And there is one left. I think we on the stage know who it is. Making their way to the front. <laughs> and there was the noise. Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you, Greg, we got Alan right. Just Alan. And Desiree and Gaz and Morgana and Victoria. <laughs> I got everyone right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the very last round in the series. The category is Big Scary Monster. The first person to make the noise of a big scary monster is that person. Here comes the noise. Oh. <laughs> oh, indeed. 
Victoria. <laughs> I just think Victoria thought he won't be expecting this of me. Big clumpy steps. Wrong. The next person is this person. Here comes the noise. <laughs> No disrespect, Desiree. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think it was. I think it was actually Morgana, but my first answer was my first answer. Next up, this person. Here comes the noise. <sighs> Alan Davis. Just two left, Greg. The penultimate person is this person. They're at the front, and here comes the noise. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who the wow monster is. <laughs> I think that might have been Desiree. Okay, you've guessed Desiree for a second time. One left, of course. Yeah. Here comes the final noise. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Morgana. You may return to your spot. And before we go any further, I want to say the only one I care about getting right was Victoria. Well, Greg, the only one you got right... Ah, uh, what? was Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> you may now turn and face your contestants again. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think I just thought everyone was done right. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you think of me now. <laughs> Make your face look like another face when your face is turned upside down. Most expressive and radically different upside down face wins. You'll have 15 minutes. The time starts now. Is there a mirror? Would you like me to get you a mirror? I'd like a mirror. Well, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? During a task where you have to do the most expressive upside-down face, Alan employs the least expressive... <laughs> <laughs> I was genuinely worried about him for a while. <laughs> right. Right. First, let's see them making their faces in a sort of throwaway makeup tutorial. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Holy shnikes, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Someone wearing a balaclava. <laughs> Googly eyes. <laughs> Six minutes left, Alan. Okay. So far, you've stuck two eyes in your chin. <laughs> We're not going to get much further than that either. Oh. <laughs> Good. Let's see. I'll tell you what, I have to have a patch. How does that look? Well, it looks like you're holding a piece of paper. Yeah, ignore the paper. Yeah. I don't focus on the paper. Okay, I'll try and not focus on the paper. How's that? I can't see the eye, the eye patch, or the moustache. Are you done? Yeah. OK. You know, I pulled out the professional makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even touch it. <laughs> I like it when uh, logic gives away to a grown woman just throwing a handful of googly eyes against her chin. Yeah. <laughs> You've thrown <laughs> enough shit at the wall, something will stick. Something will stick. <laughs> yeah, a slightly different technique to Alan. Um, <laughs> sometimes the back in music captures an image perfectly, and there was such a great sadness. <laughs> when Alan was holding his two googly eyes against his chin and there was just one 
haunting violin string played across it. <laughs> and I'd love to re-see it. Here we go. So beautiful. Clearly waiting for the glue to dry. What if... <laughs> <laughs> we took a few different shots of Alan. That was when one of the eyes fell off, so he turned into an eye patch. I mean, it looks to me like a drunk man fresh in from a car park fight at this stage. It's all kicked off at the back of the white swan. <laughs> Alan, calm down, calm down. <laughs> car park Alan. At the very end of the montage, there was one with both eyes on and a tongue poking out. Yeah. Now, this guy... This is before he's gone out. It's an awful story. <laughs> Look how happy he is. Can't wait to go out for a lovely pint. <laughs> I hope I don't get the shit kicked out of me in the car park and lose an eye. I wonder if anyone will notice how close together my eyes are and take against me. <laughs> You've asked him to bring in the most magnificent floppy thing. Wow. The most magnificent floppy thing will get a well-deserved five points, and the winner of the episode will get a quintet of magnificent floppy things to keep forever. Alan. Well, it's a model of me. It was made for a television programme about 20 years ago... Oh. ..in which my character's wife uses a model of me as a voodoo doll and sticks pins in, and the props department uh, allowed me to keep it, and it has uh, concealed about its person quite a floppy surprise. Here is the floppy Alan Davis. Yep. And... Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can see yeah. that for the way. Wow! <laughs> the body and the legs and the head are all obviously reduced, but the penis is actual size. <laughs> 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 but what's fascinating about this is that the penis does not feature in the programme at all, so it's needless addition just for a jape. I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're right, I actually can't take my eyes off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of making my mouth <laughs> 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 Oh, Alex. <laughs> You're a naughty otter. Uh, that is out of character. <laughs> well, that's what I thought, but there it is. It's in danger of scoring higher than life-saving machinery. Yeah. <laughs> Here it comes. Paint the most flattering picture of the taskmaster in action... ..on the canvas in the lab. <laughs> OK. The canvas will either be six inches or six feet above you. <laughs> you must lie flat on your back, on the creeper, at all times. You have ten minutes. To off oh, shit of you. Your time starts now, and you must tell Alex if you want the canvas to be six inches or six feet above you within the next ten seconds. Hmm. I think I want it six... Ah, oh, damn it. I think, uh, I think I'll go six feet. Six feet? Yeah. Up we go. All right, now. Yeah. Six inches. I'll go six feet. Good luck. Thank you. You must stay lying down, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Right. right. Good. Yes. Now, I'm not going to make a feature of this throughout the series because it would become very tiresome, but I will point out that everybody agonised over the height of the oh. canvas above their heads, apart from Alan, who, when he said, I think I'll go six feet, may as well have said, what does it matter, I'll be dead soon. <laughs> There's the six-footers, Alan and Victoria, and the six-inchers, Morgana, Desiree and Guz. Here's how all of them got on. Where am I going? <laughs> well, well, OK. This is the most bizarre and unnerving experience. Well, this is way closer. This is six inches. Guys always think this is six inches. This is five. I tell you what, six feet is further than I thought it would be. What can I do it with? I provided you with some paint and... What about if I've gone past them? Is this a joke? Oh, look at all this shit! OK. <laughs> ah! Oh, lovely, OK. Have you got any brushes on poles? Paint brushes? Where were they? Oh. I'm exhausted. I haven't seen any brushes. I think it's just disappointing the way this has been organised, to be honest with you. I wish I'd done six inches. <laughs> can paint from six feet. I think I've strained every muscle in my body. 20 seconds. Oh, come on. 20 seconds to give a man a soul. Do you know what I think the problem is the paintbrush? This is not uplifting for people. Ah. This is awful. <laughs> 
Alan, you'll be pleased to know you've made it into the Taskmaster Heritage Book of Quotes with, oh, come on, 20 seconds to give a man a soul. <laughs> Well, Alan said you've got a dark soul, you're red in the face and you're piggy-eyed, and he did this, <laughs> he did this picture. <laughs> I like it. Up to the last second, you didn't have any eyes at all, and it really looked terrifying. Yeah. And, but I I've, I've really have given you a soul there, and now... Oh, who wouldn't want that man? He was making The Rage of Taskmaster, that was his title. Well, The yeah. Rage of Taskmaster comes through, I like the face. Hello. Blue horns. Write and form a 30-second jingle. You must reach into the barrel to find a subject of your jingle. Then pop a balloon to discover the instrument that you must play under your jingle. Hence, pen. <laughs> you have 15 minutes. Your time starts as soon as you've chosen your subject and instrument. OK. Do you know what that is, Alan? I don't, I don't know what it is. Printer of some sort? Nearly. Laminator. <laughs> Don't know why that's funny. <laughs> it's on a scroll, and on the scroll it says, Mini Drum Kit! Ah, uh, a stylophone. That's a good instrument. If, if you know, if I could play. Swanny Whistle. Swanny Whistle. Oh, have you played the Swanny Whistle before? Mm hmm. I've got black belt. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely uh, differentiation between the laminator reactions, I thought. <laughs> or Father Time. Didn't know what that fungal technology was. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have the strength to pop a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. Shall we? OK, next up, it's Alan, accompanied by Stylophone. <laughs> and this is a big one, because we all know the Taskmaster <laughs> loves his laminators. <laughs> Imagine a world without lamination. Laminate, laminate, just in case you spill. Laminate, laminate, on your granddad's will. <laughs> You've got a very specific audience. <laughs> it would be a nice thing, that, uh, to have playing on a loop outside funeral home. <laughs> In the reading of a will. <laughs> 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 really good, Alan. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.